This is a model of the skin, and you can see the model's been divided into three portions. This is the scalp from here to here. This is the armpit, all the way over to here. And uh, this is the sole of the foot. Now the skin has two parts to it. It has an epidermis and a dermis. Underneath the skin, we have what's called the subcutaneous layer, or hypodermis. Uh, it's primarily fat and areolar connective tissue, so loose connective tissue, but it's not really part of the skin. Now you can see that there's a, a number of things happening here. We have American sweat glands that are emptying onto the surface. They make a watery sweat for cooling. We also have what's supposed to be an apocrine gland here. Unfortunately, this one is emptying onto the skin, and that doesn't normally happen. Really, the apocrine glands empty into hair follicles. And they make a sweat that's similar to the eccrine sweat, but also has some fatty material in there, uh, proteins that bacteria like to eat. And it's the bacteria that actually cause the odor. Uh, we also can see uh, that we have some hair follicles here, at the root down here. Down here, we have uh, growing hair. Most of the hair, though, is dead. It's uh, columns of dead keratinized cells. Emptying into the hair follicle, we see a sebaceous gland here. And that makes the oily substance called sebum. And it's waterproofing and antibacterial. It softens the skin, makes your hair shiny. Attached also to the hair follicle, notice this little muscle here, my favorite little smooth muscle. It's called the erector pili muscle. That's what makes your hair stand on end when you're cold or when you're scared and gives you goose pimples or goosebumps. Uh, now you can tell the different parts of the skin because we have um, hair, of course, in the, uh, both the scalp and the armpit. But in the armpit, we also have the African glands, which we don't have in the um, scalp. And here we can tell this is the sole of the foot because we have all these thick layers of the stratum corneum. Uh, this is called thick skin. It also has another layer that we don't find in the thin skin. Now, most of our skin is thin skin, but in the sole of the foot and the palms of our hands, we have this a thicker uh, epidermis here, and it includes the stratum lucidum here. Uh, you can also see some um, receptors for fine touch, Meister's corpuscles here for fine touch in hairless skin. We also down here uh, have a Piscinian corpuscle, also known as laminated corpuscle. Uh, it's for pressure. If you remember Piscinian, you can remember P for pressure. But lots of fat down here in the hypodermis, or superficial fascia is another name for it. Around each hair is also, you can't see it here, but a root hair plexus. So if you touch a single hair, you'll probably feel it. Probably not too important for us, but maybe more important for some animals when they're trying to squeeze through tight places. Uh, notice also that we have what's called dermopapillae here, weaving in and out of these epidermal grooves. This increases the surface area. There is no blood supply really to the epidermis. It is avascular, but there's a big blood supply in the dermis. And by uh, this allows, uh, gives, helps give us our fingerprints when it's extended to the surface, but also allows for a better uh, diffusion of nutrients from the capillaries.